All right. Well, welcome everybody to this month's fireside chat. Uh, Devanjan and I are joined by uh, three colleagues from Broadcom. We have Padmanabh Dabke, the Senior Director for Analytics, Zander Lichstein, the Technical Director for the Data Lake Projects, and Sanjay Gurnani, Architect for the Data Lake Products. And so we're going to go through a pretty significant data lake migration that they have done in the last year. And uh, we've prepped a bunch of really good stories for everybody. So uh, looking forward to it. Dabanjan, take it away, please. Thank you, Chad. And Padmanabh, Sanda and Sanjay, thank you for joining us today. We have a uh, lot of questions for you. This is one of the most exciting projects we have seen. Uh, so of course, people are really, really excited. So why don't we first start introducing Broadcom and the Star Data Lake project? We are also really interested in the use cases that you have. So let's start with that. Parvana, you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thanks for having us. As maybe we have already mentioned, we're all part of a group called Security Technology and Response, also known as Star, uh, within Broadcom's Security Endpoint Division. As the name suggests, uh, STAR provides the core technology behind our threat protection. Uh, we also have a team of experts that's part of the response who analyze and you know respond to emerging threats. So as part of this effort, we have migrated around 80 STAR applications in the last 12 months. And I would broadly classify them into two different segments. So first we have our traditional file protection applications that process a large number of malware samples every day and publish security depths to our endpoint agents. And second, and that's perhaps more relevant to today's discussion, uh, is our data analytics stack. We have a data pipeline that receives telemetry from millions of devices around the world and we store it in a data lake uh, on GCP. And on top of that, we have built a suite of applications. And they range from you know, machine learning applications and models that are directly tied to our protection stack, uh, file and URL reputation systems, to threat intelligence applications uh, that can detect advanced targeted attacks. So that's kind of the summary of you know, what we have on GCP today. So that's quite a lot of infrastructure. Um, what was the motivation for you to move to GCP? So it was driven by a number of different factors. Uh, there were certainly business drivers, uh, including cost reduction, for example. But more importantly, it gave us the opportunity to cleanly implement a lot of different architectural transformations. For example, we containerized a lot of our workloads. Uh, we set up uh, our uh, environment completely using uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, one of my top priorities uh, was to decentralize our data analytics platform. So we went from a very big centrally managed Hadoop cluster to running most of our applications on smaller ephemeral data proc clusters. And with all of this, you know, it's still early, but I think we are beginning to see the benefits in terms of uh, cost savings and simplicity of operation. We are really, really interested in your data lake architecture and use cases. But before we go there, you know, there are a lot of telemetry data that um, you collect. Uh, where does this telemetry data come from? I mean, what are your data sources? I can take that. So uh, Symantec's products secure millions of customers around the world uh, through software installed on desktops, mobile devices, email servers. Uh, network, gateways, cloud cloud storage, the list goes on. Providing that protection requires what you can think of as a giant feedback loop. As, as we detect and block threats in the field, those systems send back telemetry and samples, the kinds of threats, where they came from, what they tried to do on those machines, et cetera. And we analyze those samples and sift through that telemetry to decide what's bad, what's good, what needs to be blocked, what websites are safe or unsafe, et cetera and convert those opinions into new protection, which is then pushed back out to our customers and the cycle repeats. In the early days, these, this was all done by people, experts mailing floppy disks around even. So these days, you know, the number of threats and the amount of data is so overwhelming that we you know, have to use machine learning and automation to handle the vast majority of that analysis. This allows our people to focus on handling just the newest and most dangerous threats. And then these technologies are introduced into the field and you know, the cycle repeats. So all of this activity generates billions and billions of interesting events per day. And we have dozens of teams and hundreds of uh, systems which together provide this protection, detection, exoneration, intelligence. And all, all of that requires just handling a massive amount of data. That is really, really fascinating. 
Let's talk a little bit about the architecture. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what is your data lake architecture, and you already talked about data prop. What products are you using to build that architecture? Data Lake is a decentralized cloud-based architecture where we provide our uh, data lake users with uh, shared data and cloud storage. We provide them metadata services via a shared high meta store. We provide them orchestration services via Cloud Composer. And then we provide authorization via IAM and Apache Ranger. So users use their own ephemeral or persistent cluster. So their compute is decoupled from the core data lake and they can scale as needed. And same goes for their storage. For the shared metadata and uh, our orchestration services, we scale them according to our use. From the product use perspective, uh, we use Apache Spark quite a bit for our uh, data ingestion pipelines as well as our analytics workloads. And then uh, we use most of the tools from uh, Hadoop ecosystem, whether it be Hadoop, Hive, uh, Ranger, Zookeeper. So data proc was an obvious choice for us to use there. And then we use a Composer for our orchestration services. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have few use cases where we use Cloud SQL and Bigtable. For our containerized workloads, we use GKE. Some folks do use uh, Cloud Scheduler uh, and uh, Cloud Functions. And then for storing our secrets, we use Secret Manager. A lot of tools. So, um, you know, I, I totally understand that you have your choices, right? So why did you decide to use Google Cloud Analytics and what value did that provide to you? Our legacy platform had actually evolved from an on-prem solution. So, uh, you know, as Padmanabh mentioned, it was built as a single massive, relatively inflexible multi-tenant system. And this, in, in some sense, sim simplified the job of administering the platform, but, you know, introduced a number of obvious things. It, it even, you know, encouraged bad habits from the app teams. Uh, accountability was hard. Changes and upgrades were very, very painful. Uh, and ultimately, uh, performance suffered. And so moving from this monolithic implementation allowed the data lake team to deliver a platform focused entirely on enabling app teams to do their jobs. This gave our engineers much more flexibility uh, in how they develop their systems while providing perfect cost accountability, allowing app specific performance optimizations and uh, completely uh, eliminating uh, resource contention between teams. You know, having this distributed control allows teams to do more, allows them to make their own decisions. And it's also proven to be uh, much more cost effective, you know, which, which simply means we can deliver more value. I'm sure you have heard this when um, we have talked to you, but our fundamental or basic tenets for building our platform is making it open, flexible, intelligent, and secure. Do this resonate with you and your uh, teams? And how did that help you in choosing Google Cloud and Analytics platform specifically? Absolutely. So we do value open a lot. So we want portability across cloud vendors, and we don't want vendor login. So that is very important for us. From the flexibility perspective, I would say split it into two buckets, one from the design perspective, other from product perspective. So design, as Ender mentioned, we moved from a big shared cluster to like all the decentralized model so that definitely gives us uh, more flexibility. Uh, so every teams that are the users of Data Lake, they can spin up their own clusters and uh, be self-managing. So this gives them the flexibility to scale their needs as needed. And they are not like uh, logged in by this uh, when all the upgrades can happen on a shared cluster. And then everybody has to agree along uh, before we can make any changes there. From the product perspective, another example I can give you is, for example, Composer, as an example. So Composer provides a rich set of operator library that allows us to submit jobs, whether it be to be a data proc or to like uh, my GKE cluster, for example. So those are definitely like good. It has helped us uh, like uh, um, increase our adoption of our data lake, and we have given the users the tools necessary to uh, scale their needs as needed. So they definitely like it. And you know there are of course pros and cons of that flexibility. On the on the plus side, teams are managing their own infrastructure, and uh, this ephemeral you know serverless architecture allows you to do that easily. On the other hand, as you say. You know, Google prioritizes flexibility, and that can be uh, difficult for a security-minded company. So we had to make sure we had the right guardrails in place to make sure our, you know, systems remained, uh, you know, secure and efficient. 
So uh, the next topic I had, you know, you guys did a huge migration. So big congratulations on that. Now, it's not an easy thing to migrate from on-prem to cloud. So what was your experience? I mean, was it hard or did, you know, did you provide the right support, et cetera, to make it easier? Some things were easy. Some things were a little tricky. So from the easy perspective, yeah, the, most of the workloads that run on data proc or like Apache Spark jobs and Hadoop jobs, they were easy port portable on data proc. So that was the easy part. We didn't face a whole lot of issues, even though we had to downgrade a version on GCP for our use cases. For example, other thing was uh, we were using Apache Uzi for most of our orchestration. So we had to switch to Composer but that's where the uh, google pso team was very helpful they worked with us uh, and then we did a poc with one of our reference implementation and proved it to work on composer and shared it with all our team so that was very helpful from the challenging part installation of composer was a little challenging for us in an enterprise environment so you have to involve multiple teams and get the networks right so it was a little challenging other challenging part was we had still had some multi-tenant use cases across a Composer as well as Data Proc, which we shared with your team members. And then I was in one of your uh, roadmap me meetings a couple of weeks back. So I see some of them, those are getting addressed in your roadmap. Yeah, thank you for that. And now that uh, you are in production, how are things going so far? We are a happy camper at the moment. Most of our Data Lake users are uh, pretty happy with the uh, outcome they like the flexibility we are taking uh, another pass at our uh, migration and cooking over going over all our processes with the intent to optimizing our costs so most of the users i mentioned are self-sufficient and self-managed but it comes with the other responsibility you have to be a responsible citizen now you have to manage your costs yourselves so that is one thing you have to be careful about and the uh, other thing is previously when we were on a big monolithic cluster about we used to get about 20 to 25 percent calls surrounding resource usage and blocks and things like that with this new design uh, all those uh, things have disappeared so uh, our uh, support uh, room chats are uh, like we don't get those calls in our support chat rooms i'm glad to hear that yeah, that's a, that's a really fantastic result. Um, I wanted to kind of uh, take a, a step up a, a little bit and um, maybe ask Padmanabh here. So like part of Google Cloud's goal is not just to be your cloud provider, um, but also your digital transformation and technology partner like for the next 50 years. So how did the partnership and co-development with Google play into your decision making? And how do you think about that going forward? Yeah, you know, I want to go back to that question about was it hard? What is it? Was it easy? You know, it 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 was hard. Uh, I would say, and we certainly needed a partner like Google uh, to pull it off in the time frame that we did pull it off in. We worked with Google right from the start. Star again, like I have mentioned, has a large number of systems that we had to port. It came in all kinds of shapes and sizes. There were multiple owners. There are, you know. 200 plus people working in star that handle variety of these systems so coordinating all of that was not easy we probably took advantage of every little feature that google has in particular we mentioned security as one of the issues where we needed a lot of understanding we needed to set up set it up correctly there was another uh, partnership that was kind of close to my heart which was uh, setting up infrastructure as code we really partnered uh, with google's professional services in making that happen uh, so overall, I feel like we benefited a lot. We had to work with Google very closely. Conversely, uh, I hope that we gave Google a number of items that might be on the bleeding edge that would become part of Google's roadmap. And I'm pretty sure, you know, Xander and Sanjay were sort of neck deep into this and they would have a lot more to say on this topic. So I'll hand it over to them if they have any comments. From my side, I would say, yeah, we would have been able to do the migration also. It would have taken us a little longer. So I really appreciate the support that we got from the Google PSO team. So they work just like an extension of our team working with us on daily basis and participating in our standup that came as uh, handy into just uh, jump starting the migration for example examples they could provide us with technical examples or 
provide the support or facilitate the support from other product teams as needed. So that was definitely helpful. Chad, let's put it this way. Previously, it took almost an entire year to coordinate just the version upgrade of the data lake. And here we moved all 80 odd systems across the entire division to a whole new cloud provider in about a year. It was a massive, massive effort, but uh, ultimately it's looking, looking like a success. That's great to hear, like both that the tech is working for you and that the people are. Um, Dibanjan, you had a question. No, the, 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 that is fascinating. And to your point, Sanjay and Zander and Padmanabh, uh, you know, we want to work with you as your partners, as you know, and whatever feedback you have uh, in terms of roadmap, we are going to work with you on that. Now, one thing I wanted to also ask you, but you mentioned a couple of times about some of the database products. What database products do you use along with the analytics products? And have you integrated your workflows across the analytics services and the database services? Well, I think most, most notable is we had a few critical systems that were based on HBase, uh, which were able to easily you know, migrate to Bigtable. Performance has improved, and it's obviously much, much easier to maintain. Now, but with that, I think we are at the end of our session. So Padmanabh, Sanjay, and Xander, thank you for joining us today. And big congratulations for pulling off one of the biggest migrations of data lake from on-prem to cloud. And looking forward to working with you in future and work as partners in making data lake really, really successful for you and possibly for others and your customers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.